Today on Applied Science, we're going to talk about air bearings. These are kind of like an engineering cheat code because you get so much for so little. The parts cost is only a few dollars, and I'm going to show you in today's video how to build these without any special tools. So besides the super low friction, you can also do funny tricks like this. It's actually a captive bearing, and the way it works is it uses vacuum to hold the sphere in there. So you can actually pull it out, and you can see there's a hole there where it's got vacuum put it in and it's captive and super, super low friction. So let me turn off the vacuum pump so you can hear me a little better and then we'll take a look at what we've got. I've been playing with different air bearing designs off and on for a few months, but actually coincidentally, uh, someone by the name of David Priest recently produced a video on air bearings and was featured on Hackaday. So that kind of got my interest back up again and prompted me to make this video. And I'll link to his in the description. So the key here is we're going to be talking about graphite air bearings. The magic material here are big chunks of graphite. And the reason that we use this is because uh, it's porous. Even though it looks like a solid piece, it really is only about 85% there. It's 15% it's open void. And uh, another reason to use this is that it's very soft, so that if your bearing crashes, uh, instead of having steel-on-steel -steel contact, uh, you have steel on graphite. And it's, this is a pretty slippery material anyway. It comes off even in your own fingerprints even pull it off. So the next question is what kind of graphite can you use? Um, all the graphite that I'm going to show you in this video came from Amazon and I tried buying it from different sellers, different um, types of like different shapes and sizes. Some of these are just weird off cuts. Uh, probably the best deal is to get a 10 millimeter thick plate of it like this. Uh, this is convenient because it's got smooth surfaces to start with so it's easy to fabricate, easy to cut. And I've noticed about the same performance for all these different chunks. To make the spherical bearing, uh, I used a more chunk like this. Um, to make the cylindrical bearing, kind of a chunk like this. And I haven't noticed any performance differences between all this stuff, so I'm inclined to think that all of the sort of standard grade graphite performs good enough. Uh, these bearings are probably not going to be the highest performance things ever, but you don't have to get any special graphite is what I'm saying, at least from my experience. So, you know, people say that uh, machining graphite is really messy, and they're right. Uh, it's actually pretty terrible. The dust gets everywhere. Uh, it gets on the floor, and it's slippery because it's, you know, a dry lubricant, and then it gets on your shoes, and then you track it to somewhere else. And I thought, well, you know, it's not too bad. But And then an hour or two after one of these machining operations, I blew my nose, and I'm not going to show it to you, but it, it gets everywhere, let's just say. So, yeah, uh, dust collection is a pretty big deal. A really basic way to get started is just to make a flat air bearing, and I'll show you what the structure looks like. Uh, you could, don't even need to use any like custom fabbed parts. This is actually a PVC pipe fitting, a cap, just like that. And all you have to do is cut out a really rough piece of graphite out of your 10 millimeter slab, just on the bandsaw is fine, and then glue it into the cap. And of course, you'll have a rough surface on this side. So then all you have to do is put some sandpaper on a flat surface, glass even works, and sand it down flat. And the graphite is so incredibly soft, it, it won't take any time at all. Like literally just one minute of sanding is plenty. And you don't need any crazy fine sandpaper. I just used uh, 150 grit, I think. And uh, you could definitely take your time and make this a little better. But the point is, even with 150 grit, one minute of sanding, you're ready to go. And you'll have a totally functional air bearing. Um, glass, thin pieces of glass will actually bend, like glass, uh, eighth inch window glass is pretty flexible. So if you're going to use that, you want to put it on a very flat surface to start with. I found out that even my nice table here is not quite flat enough to make a really good air bearing. So if you have really thick glass laying around, that actually works much better. One of the biggest challenges that I had with uh, this design is that you get air leakage past the piece of graphite. The trick is that if you're gluing the plug in like this, the glue has to have a pretty good shear uh, strength with the puck to keep it from just blowing the whole piece of graphite out of the, of the PVC fitting. And uh, in David Price's video, he had a great idea of sort of cutting a, a taper on this and then gluing in so that the glue would form like a wedge so that it wouldn't have to do complete shear loading to hold it. It would actually get a little bit of you know, purchase on there. And I tried that and had you know, some, uh, some luck with it. But leakage past the, the chunk of graphite was still a pretty big problem. 
actually, I shouldn't say it's a big problem because if air leaks pass, you know what, it's still an air bearing. <laughs> so it's still, it's okay if you actually have pinhole leaks. Like I say, this whole air bearing concept is very forgiving in lots of different ways. And so scratches, holes, even gouges and leaks that are going by your puck don't actually decrease the performance that much. Might make it a little less efficient in terms of air, but uh, that's okay too. So then I started uh, making designs that were a little bit more captive to try to get around this air leakage problem. And the trick here is that you want to have uh, two parts to your, to your chamber. So instead of just one uh, part like this PVC cap where you have to glue the piece in, what would really be nice is to have two pieces, like a top and a bottom, so that you cut the graphite so that there's a ledge on there. And then you glue the ledge into the top half so that the seal surface is basically trying to be forced outward by the air pressure. What you really want is air pressure forcing your seal to be better, not worse. After I was comfortable making just plain flat air bearings, I found this technique of vacuum preloading, which is really cool. Basically, we've got two uh, connections to the bearing now. The smaller one is just adding pressure to the back side of the graphite, forcing air through the porous uh, part of the graphite. And the other port is connected to vacuum, and the vacuum is just connected right to this open chamber here. Couldn't be simpler. It's literally just an open chamber. And so what's happening is the vacuum is actually trying to pull the, the flat piece, in this case, down, and the air pressure is trying to force it up. And so those two forces act against each other and keep the bearing captive. Um, <laughs> pretty powerful concept. They call it preloading because if you, if you were to add like too much load, you could actually ground the bearing, as they say. And you can calculate by how much area you have up here and how much pressure you're putting in. Then you would know how much weight the bearing can support. And typically for air bearings, it's not that high. It's about you know, 50 or 60 PSI or three to four atmospheres or something like that. Um, and if you calculate the area, you can figure out how much weight you're going to hold up. Uh, you can also change the amount of vacuum area you have relative to the amount of pressure sort of supporting area. Sorry about the compressor noise. As I was saying, I haven't experimented a huge amount with different vacuum pressure ratios, but from the few that I've built, I've noticed that the, it's not very critical again. Like you can get away with quite a lot of different stuff. Um, so let's talk about making these non-flat ones. The flat ones are easy because you can just get a thick piece of glass and use that as your thing to make it into a perfectly flat surface and you end up with a nice flat air bearing. But if you want to make a cylinder or a sphere, the fit between the cylinder that goes in here, the sphere that goes in here has to be really good, amazingly good. And so usually people use precision tooling, you know, a boring head on a mill or something like that. But that's hard to set up and it's expensive. So what I'm going to show you is a shortcut method of how to do this without any special tooling. And you're going to probably laugh when you see how um, crude this method is, but it works amazingly well. The idea is that we make a cutting tool out of the thing that we're going to eventually put into the bearing. So to make this spherical air bearing, first you want to just hog out the material to get it close, right? And I used a, um, a big die grinder to basically just hog out some material. And then I made a, an abrasive cutter by putting super glue onto this two inch uh, spherical ball bearing and coating it with uh, 80 grit garnet, basically making sandpaper on the surface of this bearing. And then just by hand ground it down in there to make a chamber that's about the same diameter as the sphere. And uh, I have no patience for hand tools. So when I tell you that even I was able to do this without getting too frustrated, uh, believe me, the process does go pretty quickly. The graphite is just so soft that you, you feel like you're making good progress after every pass you take, and then that kind of keeps you going. So after using the sandpaper approach, the fit is nowhere near good enough. I mean, it's close, but it's, it's nowhere near perfect for an air bearing. So then, to make it really fine, I took another, or cleaned off the sand basically from the, from the tooling bearing, and then got a uh, disc grinder and cut some slots into the ball bearing and made it into a file. So with these slots cut in here, there's a very slight amount of cutting action, but the sphere is still absolutely perfect. I mean, there's a huge amount of area here that the thing can ride in. And then again, just by hand, just ground it down in there like you're juicing an orange. And uh, it works. I can't believe it. But again, it's fast enough where you won't get frustrated, even if you hate hand tools. It's not like I spent all day squeezing this orange into there to make a nice fit.
what you end up with is a almost a zero clearance gap because the exact same tool makes the exact cut that you know it's 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 the same part basically. Or I mean, with these ball bearings, I actually did use a separate one. Obviously, this is the tooling, and this is the one that's actually being used. But these come out of a factory that has incredibly tight grinding tolerances. And similarly, uh, for these linear rails, I'll put links to all this stuff in the description. These came from McMaster. Uh, the ball bearings came from Amazon. The grinding tolerances on these are really tight, so you can be guaranteed that if you buy one of these, uh, even from a different lot, it will be a very, very consistent diameter. In retrospect, the file cutting action was so good that I'm not sure we even really needed the sandpaper approach. Maybe it kind of depends how frustrated you are, or how good you are with the die grinder, or maybe you've got another technique to make this uh, the first cut a little bit more accurate, and then you don't need the 80 grit sanding as much. But I used a very similar process to make this open-sided sphere or open-sided cylindrical air bearing. Uh, but in this case, we didn't have to use the super glue with the uh, grit dusted on there. I basically just put some sandpaper with double stick tape onto a onto the sphere or onto the rod. And then uh, also, again, cut it into a file and pushed the block onto this filed area to make it a, a good fit. Let me uh, take down this. Oh, I should also point out that without the vacuum preloading, the friction here is super low. I'm sure you've noticed as I've been talking, this thing is just spinning and spinning. It's really low friction. And as some of the air escapes past the side of the bearing, it actually keeps it going. I think once it's perturbed in a certain direction, the escaping air actually keeps it rotating. If I turn on the vacuum preload, the thing probably shifts geometry ever so slightly, and even though the friction is very, very low, it's not quite as low without the vacuum preload. So let me take this one down and I'll set up the big sphere or the big uh, cylindrical one. I've got some magnets here just keeping it captive, and uh, we're running at about 60 psi of input air. And I was a little bit concerned that this one has a lot of exposed graphite that doesn't really go into the bearing. And I was worried that like the air was going to you know, leak out. But it turns out that the, the porous structure of it really, once it gets charged with pressurized air, even if you've got an exposed face that's not part of the bearing, that's, that's not a problem. And um, one thing I've noticed is that with a, with a setup like this, if this thing gets to be offset, the, the shaft will tend to tilt a little bit, and once you've ruined the air cushion, like once you've disturbed the consistency of that air cushion, it's no longer a bearing and the whole thing literally grinds to a halt. But uh, I have it set up here so that it can't really get too far off, and this thing is wide enough to really hold it. So it's kind of cool to have a bearing that you can just quickly take apart like this and then put it in like this, and it's, you know, pretty darn close to zero friction. Um, another point is that the the stopping and starting is very good. So even if you, if you don't care too much about the overall friction, the fact that it takes tiny amounts of effort to get it started is one of the air bearings kind of key features. There's no stiction. And then there can't be because there's no contact. Another cool feature of air bearings is that the wear is zero because the two parts are not touching each other. There's a tiny air cushion between them. The bearing can't ever really wear out. I mean in theory, because there's no contact. In reality, dust and dirt and whatever gets in there, it might scratch it up or something, but there isn't any metal to metal or moving part to stationary part contact, so it can't wear out. I ended up 3D printing these on an FDM printer and uh, using Simplify 3D to do the slicing. And the idea is just that it's you know relatively cheap to 3D print objects of this size with FDM. And the air tightness of the 3D print is okay, it's acceptable, and the strength is also almost okay. I've had these up to about 70 or almost 80 PSI and had one burst just about 80. Uh, this has three outer layers and about 40% infill. So I would say they're almost okay, probably want to beef it up just a little bit more. Another technique that I used was to coat the inside surface with epoxy to kind of improve the air holding ability and also the strength a little bit more too. I'll show you this flat uh, captive air bearing in action. It's actually really kind of fun to play with. Um, so now it's, it's locked on to the piece of glass, and if I can hold it perfectly level, it will stay there, sort of. And um, <laughs> it's, it is actually really kind of, it's, it's hard to show on video maybe what this feels like, but it's, it's very odd. 
if you're in the market for a granite surface plate anyway, you can get these on Amazon. And then of course the performance is really great because this is super flat and it's not going to be uh, influenced by the surface you have it on. It's always going to be very flat. And uh, the performance is noticeably better than even thick glass. You can tell that this is not even close to level. In fact, that actually makes it sort of fun to play with because it's like a bouncing ball, but, <laughs> but it's an electrical transformer. A couple other final notes. The air fittings that I'm using are somewhat standardized. These are 1032 straight threads that you use a rubber gasket to, to seal, so it's not a tapered pipe thread. And I'll put links to all this stuff from McMaster. Uh, for the pressure tube, I'm using a 1 16th inch ID hose just because it's really small and flexible. It makes the demos a little bit nicer. Um, the glue is just two-part epoxy. I experimented with a few other kinds of glue, but really two-part epoxy is by far the best, so just use that. Um, the biggest sort of <laughs> innovation, if you could call it that, in my design was using this ledge so that the thing was captive. This way, the air pressure is just putting more force on that glue joint and keeping it shut. Try to avoid all sorts of um, shear areas where the glue is sort of responsible for holding the thing together in shear. One thing that I haven't tried yet but I think is going to work pretty well is to make a fully uh, enclosed bearing. Like basically, you know, push this through the block and then have uh, air forced out all throughout. As opposed to my one-sided cylindrical bearing, it would be nice to have a fully enclosed cylindrical, cylindrical bearing. And the way I would do that is drill a hole that's undersized by 10 or 20 thou, and then make a, a file or a brooch, the same method that I showed uh, for the spherical and the large cylinder. Basically just cut slots in this thing and very carefully by hand push it through. And the graphite is so soft it'll just get out of the way. It's almost like a, a centerless grinder. Like it doesn't work. This technique would not work to put your, your custom made file into a drill press or any other powered machinery because then you're relying on the run out of that machinery being very low. The benefit of this method is that you're, it, it's essentially centerless because you're using your hands to find the center and that's what allows the method to be so accurate. So something to try for all of you air bearing enthusiasts out there. Okay, well I hope you found that interesting and I will see you next time. Bye.